What is it that men suppress? They suppress what can be known about God. And here's what it says. It's plain to them because God has shown it to them. This isn't by chance. God has made a distinct effort to reveal Himself. In other words, when man considers the human eyeball, that it couldn't work if you took any part away. And then they turn around and they say it evolved. God says, man, you are a fool. When they see a bird fly and they think, oh, that must have evolved. I was driving along yesterday and I noticed one of these great big C5s and I was just imagining if I had Spurgeon in the car with me and we were driving along at, you know, 65 mile an hour on the interstate and he'd probably be terrified at such a speed and look up and as I was seeing a helicopter over here and a C5 over there and I was thinking what this would look like to somebody 100 years old. And can you imagine if we all of a sudden resurrected Spurgeon and I said, well yeah, that, that uh, C5 up there, that, that thing just evolved. You know, there was an explosion and it kind of wound up flying up there. But you see, that's what men do. They look at a bird flying or human eyeball seeing the complexity of the inner cell that they have discovered. To, just the workings inside the nucleus of the cell these days are so complex, they blow your mind. And look, you guys can go on YouTube and you can do a little bit of searching and find some, some animated uh, versions that come right out of some of these, these colleges and these universities. It's just it's mind-boggling, the, the RNA and the DNA and the things that go on inside the cell. If any of you have seen this uh, Expelled movie with Ben Stein that's out now, um, he asked one of these guys, that, <laughs> if... If the cell was a Cadillac in Darwin's day, in other words, if man understood it to have the complexity of a Cadillac, what do we now understand it to be? And he said, a galaxy. That's how complex it is. You know what man does? Look what, look what Romans 19 says. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them for His invisible attributes. In other words, attributes. What's an attribute? It's a characteristic. They're invisible, but He has so designed something as to reveal those attributes. What has He designed? What has He done to show man who He is? Namely, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world. You guys wondering how we were going to get to creation in all this? Brethren, let me tell you something. It's in the very creation that God reveals Himself. And man says, have you, can you believe it? The, the men and the women that are in the medical fields, that are in the universities, they have IQs that run circles around me. But what does he say here? Claiming to be wise, they become fools. Did, have you guys seen that Ben Stein thing? Here are these, you know. These guys are so intellectual and they've got... And then Stein asked them, how did it all begin? Well, they're just stumbling all over the world. I, I think maybe on the back of crystals. I think, uh, I, I, I think aliens. Yeah, that's it. It's like, this is unbelievable. These guys are so sophisticated, they're so intellectual, they're so knowledgeable, they have IQs that go through the roof, and then when it comes down to, how did it start? Mr. Atheist himself, Richard Dawkins, you guys know the guy? He looks like an absolute idiot. 
an absolute idiot when Stein asks him, how did it all start? You know what he realizes? He realizes that it is so sophisticated, it had to have taken a knowledge form, some kind of superior knowledge. There had to be a designer. And you know what he does? He surmises that it, it came from another planet. <laughs> Unbelievable. You, you want to get the guys just all stuttering and, and just... There it is, folks. And it's like... And, and you know what? He said to him, what if you get to the end and you find out there is a God? You know what he said? <clears throat> he said, I suppose I'll ask him why he made himself so hard to be seen. That's it. In other words, I looked, I looked, I looked, and I couldn't see you. And God says, Mr. Dawkins, the proof of him is everywhere. Your problem is you've suppressed the truth. Because when believing in a Creator is far more reasonable than their foolish solutions, they will not believe that there could possibly be a God. Why? Because they hate Him. They hate God with a passion. And that's what Romans 8, 7 says. At enmity with God. They suppress. And here's, here's what it says. Ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. You know what God's going to look at Dawkins and say, you are without excuse. You of all people looked at creation and knew there must be a designer and you came up with some silly idea about aliens. <laughs> For although they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks to Him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. Here it is. And exchanged the glory. I'll tell you this. When it says that men, all of us, have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. It means right there. In everything that's been made, His divine attributes, they're perceivable. But man suppresses it. No! Don't show me! I don't want to see it! He suppresses it. And He exchanges the glory. That's man's, that is man's crime. You say, what's the worst sin we can think of? You know what humanistic, man-centered American men and women are going to tell us? If you were to go up and down this street right now and take a survey, tell us what you think is the greatest crime. Murder. You know why they say murder? Because their whole life is centered around themselves. In their estimation, they are big and God is small. And so in their estimation, man is big and God is small. And so in their estimation, the greatest crime is the crime against man. But what Paul says is, hold on a second. When I want to define sin, I don't even talk about crimes against man. When I talk about sin and the fact that all men have sinned. He says, I want you to see the heart of the matter is the glory of God. <clears throat> Men have exchanged the glory. You want to talk about creation? I'll tell you what, 
The Bible is replete. I cannot even tell you. I haven't counted them. The number of times that our Bibles tell us that God is the one who made the heavens and the earth. Over and over and over and over again, the Bible comes back to us with that reality. In Romans 1.25, it says they exchanged the truth about God for a lie. In Romans 1.28, it says since they did not see fit to acknowledge God. Sin is about belittling God. Not trusting Him, not wanting Him. Not having Him at the center of our lives. Creation figures right into the heart of this because it's creation that shows us glory that makes man without excuse. 